Today, a man who traveled to the United Kingdom from the United States, initially to be an actor, then something happened and he decided, no, comedy, that is what he is. Who he is? Reginald D. Hunter. All right. Oh, man. That's so. You're looking good, Rob. I'm looking great, aren't I? <laughs> yes, you are. So yes. tell me now, this show that you're taking to Edinburgh, are you already performing it ahead of Edinburgh? I have a show that I've been touring that is ready and completely prepared to go. It's a fine show. It's been well-reviewed, and I am bored to Dickens with it. So um, I am currently in the process of digging around for more jokes that will be interesting for all of us and not just you. Not just me. I want to enjoy the show, too. I mean, believe it or not, I want to participate in the yeah. enjoyment. And I have more enjoyment if I find something new that makes me laugh or makes me feel like a poke with a stick. See what it do. That's the conundrum, though, isn't it? I remember the first time I did, I did a relatively long tour, the shock at getting to that stage where I started to hate the material. Mm. This show previously, it's been going so good that I just feel the need to mess it up, like throwing a, blick, a brick through a plate glass window. And it's like, it, it, it doesn't feel like it's where it ought to be. And so and it's in a great place, but I might have to destroy it some in order to get to the next phase. I don't want to sound all precious about it, but I'm, I, had a, I had my first preview last night and I'm still feeling it. So, you know. You've been over here for quite a while now. Were you 27 when you came here? There's about, yes. I've always thought of you as an out and out classic comedian, but you came over to RADA, I'm answering these questions for you because I know the answer. You came over to do a summer course at RADA. What was in your mind then? What were you going to be? I had told myself that I was going to give the acting thing five years. And if the acting thing didn't work, I was going to go to chef school. Wow. I was going to come here to England. And since the goal was to get to New York or LA and make a name there, I thought it might be a feather in my cap if I came to, to England and got credentialized by the British. And so, um, and then it was on the way to, cred to credentialization that I backed in stand-up comedy. How, how did that happen? I was in a pub one night and I just told the story a million times, Rob. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, tell it again, you lazy man. God, I, I, hey Cash, when did Rob Brighton get hard? Uh, okay. I, I didn't know he was hard. God, dog. Reg, do you think I haven't given an answer I've given a thousand times before? There may be people in my wholesome audience who haven't heard you say this. Oh, I just thought, I, I, I knew that you'd had that experience. That's why I was hopeful that I, me saying what I said would make you give me a break. But I see it's still off of self here, so I'll just go ahead and answer Quite the reverse. <laughs> all, right, all right, I will answer the question. I was in a pub one night in Birmingham. And I had just got. Oh, I've heard this one before. Let me ask you something else. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me respect you, Brighton. Don't you dare. <laughs> Don't make me respect you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't make me well, respect you. You've gotten you. along just fine having a having having a certain opinion. We don't want to turn that into respect. So you're in a let me all right, let me guess it. You're in a bar, somebody's doing some stand up. You don't you think I could do that. You get up, you go down really well, and there's your new path. Roughly. Roughly, that's it. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, what? So, so did, did the thoughts, did the thoughts of acting, just leave you then, or was it more of a gradual thing? I don't know that I ever loved acting, even though I was really into it. If I loved acting, I fell really in love with stand up. But I'd have to say that when I was doing it on the circuit, and I was seeing people like yourself and Jimmy Carr and others more regularly, I didn't feel like I was doing it by myself. But since I've been on this touring life... Yeah, it's a different experience, isn't it? It's a different experience. It was a lovely communal thing when you'd be playing places. I only did it for a short period, but I'd get you get to see the same faces. Touring is a whole different game. It's, yeah. it's hotels late at night, 
hotels at midday, some motorway service stations, uh, everything revolving around 7.30 or 8 o'clock that night. And the time is an interesting consideration because I see when you go to Edinburgh with bomb chaffleur, am I saying that properly? Very properly. Thank you. <laughs> when you take bomb chaffleur to the Edinburgh Festival at the assembly rooms, no less, you're on at 9.30. And when I read that, I thought to myself, oh, that's a sort of a perfect time, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. That's just on the edge. It's like, um, yeah. I think after 10 o'clock can be dangerous to do between Monday and Thursday, you know, in terms of audience attendance. Mm -hmm. But at 9.30, you start at 9.30, just on the edge of the switch over between nighttime and daytime people. You're just on the edge of that. 9.30 also suggests families are still welcome, but this is more for grown people. Okay, what we might call adults. Adults, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> ah! Oh, man, I, I just had a flash of a vision of your audience just then, and what we may call adults. <laughs> <laughs> you came over when you when you were 27 and it's to do am i right a summer course at rada that's true is that something you had to audition for or something you could just pay for and anybody could do it i had to audition wow. um they, okay. at, at that time they, they auditioned uh once a year in new york and i went to the one in new york and we were auditioned at the un plaza and so that was in itself an intimidating thing I and six people were chosen from my group out of 4, 1,500 American applicants. You were that good to be chosen, and you gave it up after seeing some stand-up in a pub in London. It just felt like I had more direct control of what my fortunes would be in stand-up as opposed to acting. It just seemed like in stand-up comedy, if you're funny, you'll work. <laughs> it, doesn't matter. it doesn't matter what you look yeah, like or where yeah. you come from or how tall you are or how... Uh, big your breasts are, or worse, not, you'll still work. Whereas with acting, I mean, there's so many, there's, uh, there's a lot of reasons why you, uh, first of all, most actors are out of work because there's like way more actors than there are jobs. I often tell young comedians when they, whenever they ask me, that that thing that you do when you're hilarious with your friends, you're trying to get that on stage. You're trying to get that same feeling, that, feel, that same feeling of command, devil may careness. I'm trying to get that bounce on stage. Whatever it is that you do when you're by yourself looking in the mirror that makes yourself giggle, you're trying to get that on stage. And then can you identify exactly what that is and learn how to reproduce it for yourself every time you need it? And can you do it on a Tuesday night in Scarborough exactly. to a, a room that's hardly anybody has turned up to? It's raining outside, you've had a flat tire, uh, you've had some bad news at home. Can you do it then as well? That's the that's the, the 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 big challenge, and I think that's where this thing of tenacity and determination, and so many of the people that that achieve big success, I think that's the common denominator. As much as talent is just bloody bloody minded determination, and just going and going and going and and, and keeping on going. I remember uh, a few years, about fifteen years ago, I'm on my way on the train to Brighton to do my first ever tour show. First time Reginald D. Hearn's name is on the marquee. And I'm on the train and my mobile rings and it's my brother to tell me that mama had just died. And, and when, I got to the, when I got to the auditorium, the promoter and staff, they'd already been apprised and they knew. And the promoter said, Reg, totally understandable if you want to cancel tonight. And I thought about it for a moment, and I could just see my mom's face saying, I dare you to quit. Yeah. I dare you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, it's, it's easy to make people feel good when you feel good. But sometimes when it counts, it's being able to make people feel good when you don't. And sometimes the only, oh, way, for you, absolutely. Sometimes the only way for you to feel better is to make people feel good. <laughs> yeah, that's an old saying, isn't it? If you, you're worried about how you feel, just just think about some other people. Go and do something for somebody else. Stop trying to find something for yourself. Mm -hmm. How big a figure in your life was your mother? Uh, about five, seven, five, eight. 
I didn't for a second think that you would go that way with it, but that's your <laughs> choice, Reg, and that's something you're going to have to live with. <laughs> I feel so you, 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 you know, you, you, you do know we're recording this, don't you? Yeah, I don't know what made me, but in that moment, I just felt like doing one of your kind of jokes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How dare dare you. I would have made beautiful, insightful. I would have made something that was an indictment of, of gender stereotypes. I would, I would have been pushing envelopes yeah. like somebody on his first day at Ryman's. When you told your mum, I'm going to go to Britain, to England, to be an actor, what was her response? She didn't think much of this at all. How did she express that? The day I was coming here, getting ready to be driven to the airport. My father and my mother and my sister, they were lined up in the yard and I hugged the old man and then I hugged my sister and my sister was, my sister was like, <laughs> I don't want anybody to hurt my brother. And I was like, oh, you. And then, um, and then there was my mom, she was standing as stiff as a statue. And when I hugged her, she didn't hug me back. And so that was, as silent of a protest as she could make about her disapproval about this whole England venture. <laughs> but as I turned to go, she grabbed me by the hand and she said, hey, you're kind, you're generous, you're welcoming. I know because I raised you and you don't make people bow to be with you. So if anybody needs for you to bow to be with them, you tell them your mama told you to tell them to kiss your ass. That's the closest, most supportive thing that she could say. Wow. Oh, my word. Oh, my <laughs> word. I see a film, Reg. I see a film ab 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 about this. That's bloody cinematic. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to commoditize all of my memories. Okay, but when you, when you, once I've shown you some of the figures involved and, and what the re uh, remuneration could be, maybe you'll reconsider. You don't have to decide now. Rob, I hate it when people see through me, okay? So knock it off. <laughs> I see you. Stop it, I you. See you. I see you. I know what's going on. Me, Jim, Jim. I know what's going on you're in there. You're a sorcerer, you are. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not going to go so far as advertising cruises, but every man has his price. Depends on the cruise, baby. <laughs> <laughs> So listen, you're going to be at the Assembly Rooms in Edinburgh from the 3rd to the 28th of August. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful Edinburgh, beautiful Assembly Rooms with a bomb shuffler, which is going to be, as I see it, there's some new stuff in there. There's some stuff that you've been doing and that was lovely, but enough to keep you interested and alive. If people want to go to see it, they can just go online and they can find out <laughs> where you are. Yeah. I have thoroughly enjoyed talking to you. Do you know how long ago it was that you were on Would I Lie to You? See if you can remember. No, I can't. But if I could just say real quick, I appreciate um, you plugging my show like that. Uh, just next time, uh, if you could do it with just a bit more enthusiasm, that'd be all right. Um, I can't remember the last time uh, I did. Uh, it, 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 was, it's, it has to be over 10 years ago, surely, right? Yeah, it was 2000, 2009 from, what, oh, from my wow. research. I wouldn't. Wow. Have thought, I, I would never have said it was that long ago. Oh man! Okay, Reg. Here's what I'm going. Here's what I'm going to do. Okay, ready? Here we go. If you're in Edinburgh this August for the festival, check out one of the best shows in town, Reginald D. Hunter with Bomb Shuffler at the Assembly Rooms from the third to the twenty eighth of August. Guaranteed laughter, guaranteed hysterics. Go and see it. You may want to walk out, but you can't ignore him. How about that? That's very good, and I appreciate you doing all that you could to suppress the inherent sarcasm that you want to imbue it with. I, I know that was tough, and thank you. Thank you very much. There's no sarcasm, Reginald. I, that was heart. That was from my commercial voiceovering heart. Dan, I was too inappreciative, and I withdraw my previous statement. Thank you for digging in and giving me some of Rob, Rob Brighton's best. Reg. A great pleasure, as I knew it would be. Thank you, Reg. <laughs> See you, my friend. See you, Rob Brighton.